Good morning. Bobby, could you please read the problem? And Billy, could you please translate? Flippin' physics. A tennis ball with a mass of 58 grams is launched from a trebuchet with an initial speed of 6.8 meters per second and an initial height of 1.3 meters. Assuming level ground, what is the final speed of the ball right before it strikes the ground? The mass of the ball is 58 grams. The initial speed is 6.8 meters per second. The initial height is 1.3 meters. And we are solving for the final speed of the ball. Two dollars. Thank you to Will, Jacob, Natalie, and Mary, my students who built and let me borrow their trebuchet. He has other students? Where are they? Class, after the tennis ball leaves the trebuchet, is there a force applied on the ball? No. no. Is there a force of friction acting on the ball? No. no. Then is mechanical energy conserved? Yes. yes. Total mechanical energy is conserved when there is no work done by the force of friction and no work done by a force applied, which is true in this problem. Therefore, the total mechanical energy initial equals the total mechanical energy final. Bo, what should we do now? Uh, we need to solve the equation. That's actually not very helpful. Um, Billy and Bobby, could you please help out Bo? We need to identify our initial and final points. And the location of the horizontal zero line. Okay. The initial point is where the tennis ball leaves the trebuchet. And the final point is right before the ball lands in the ground. And let's set the horizontal zero line at the final height of the ball. Very nice. Remember, Whenever you are working with conservation of mechanical energy, you need to specifically identify the locations of the initial point, the final point, and the horizontal zero line. Bobby, what are the three different types of mechanical energy? Kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic potential energy. We list all of the mechanical energies which could possibly be there. Kinetic energy initial, plus gravitational potential energy initial, plus elastic potential energy initial, is equal to kinetic energy final, plus gravitational potential energy final, plus elastic potential energy final. Billy, could you please give me the equations for all the mechanical energies? One half mass times velocity initial squared, plus mass times acceleration due to gravity times height initial, plus one-half times the spring constant times displacement from equilibrium position initial squared equals one-half mass times velocity final squared plus mass times acceleration due to gravity times height final plus one-half times the spring constant times displacement from equilibrium position final squared. That is correct. This little equation, mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final, actually works out to be this giant equation. And our job is to look at the giant equation and decide which energies cancel out because they are equal to zero. So, Bo, look at the equation and tell me which energies cancel out because they are equal to zero and why? Well, there is no spring in the problem, so there isn't an elastic potential energy, either initial or final, right? That is correct. No spring, so no elastic potential energy in this problem. Billy, what else? There is no kinetic energy final because the ball stops when it strikes the ground. Actually, the final point is right before the ball strikes the ground, so the final velocity is not zero. The final vertical height above the horizontal zero line, however, is zero uh, because the ball is at the horizontal zero line when it's at that final point. So the final gravitational potential energy is zero. Everybody brought masks to the party. Everybody brought masks to the party.
Everybody brought masks. masks. Everybody brought masks to the party. We can be equitable. We can take masks from everyone. And we're left with one half times velocity initial squared plus the acceleration due to gravity times the height initial is equal to one half times velocity final squared. Uh, and we can solve for the final velocity. We can multiply through the whole equation by two. And take the square root of the whole equation and move velocity final over to the left side. And we get the velocity final equals the square root of the quantity velocity initial squared plus two times the acceleration due to gravity times the vertical height initial. And now we can substitute in values. To get velocity final equals the square root of the quantity 6.8 squared plus 2 times 9.81 times 1.3, which works out to be 8.4703, or with two significant digits, 8.5 meters per second. 8.5 meters per second is the final velocity of the ball. Eight point five meters per second is the final velocity of the ball. Velocity is a vector. We we need a direction. Billy, you are correct that velocity is a vector, and if I had asked for the final velocity of the ball, then you would need to give me a direction. However, I only asked for the final speed of the ball. Therefore, eight point five meters per second is the correct complete. Answer. Mr. P? Yes, Bobby? Why didn't we use projectile motion to solve this problem? Nice. And now, it does look like a projectile motion problem that we would solve by breaking the initial velocity into its components and listing what we know in the x and y directions. However, we actually cannot solve this problem using the projectile motion equations. Why not? We only know the initial speed, not the initial velocity. Right. We don't have the direction for the initial speed, so we can't break it into its components. Correct. We do not have a direction for this initial speed. Therefore, we cannot break the initial velocity into its components. Therefore, we cannot use projectile motion. We can, however, use conservation of mechanical energy because energy is a scalar and therefore does not have direction. So, we can determine the final speed, but we cannot determine a direction for this final speed. Mr. P? Yes, Bo? Why can't we skip writing out all the energies which could possibly be there and just write out the energies which are there instead? That just seems like a lot of extra work. <sighs> yes, of course. This comes up every time. Okay. Please believe me when I tell you that you will make many fewer mistakes if you write out this long equation with all of the equations for all of the different types of mechanical energies which could be there and then cross off the ones that are not and list a reason why. Again, in the long run, you will make many fewer mistakes. I will fully admit that you can skip this step of writing out all the different types of mechanical energies. You can go right from conservation mechanical energy to this giant equation. However, please always write out the giant equation and make fewer mistakes. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.